You know, this is the ha one of the happiest days of my life to see you, Skip. Welcome back, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Looking great, but uh, good morning. And uh, like everybody across the country, exciting time of the year. I think every college football team probably feels the same way as they embark in training camp. We're five in, and, uh, you know, we'll, well, today was five, but we'll get going now, you know, really with the meat of training camp here between now and um, getting into uh, game week. So, Guys came back in phenomenal shape. I really, you know, it's changed a lot in my 14 years where guys would disappear a little bit. Now they're here pretty much the whole summer. And, um, you know, to see the way they came back, I, I think uh, retention mentally uh, was outstanding also. So a lot of work to do between now and game week. Still going through heavy installation, offense, defense, special teams. And then we'll start to get into some little bit more competitive and situational things here as we get into the weekend from an overview standpoint, and then we'll work through a lot of different situational football once we get to Kenosha and then beyond. So a lot of work to do, but, uh, you know, excited about the group here as we uh, get ready to embark uh, going up to Kenosha here in a couple of days. So with that, how about some questions that I can answer? Just given that you guys are perhaps unsettled. Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Tribune. <laughs> given that you guys are perhaps uh, unsettled at quarterback, is this a year where you'd rather be opening against like Western Tennessee Tech or uh, yeah. what's your thought on that? Yeah, Teddy, you know, I think as you look back at our track record, Mick and I, we've, we've gone through this now a number of times where we've had quarterback graduation and now we have quarterback change. Um, and, and I think we've handled it maybe as well as anybody is, is I think a head coach and coordinator has handled it in, in college football. You know, you see the development of the next guy, the development uh, for our football team to play within the framework of the way we want to play to win games. Uh, you know, I don't know if anybody's done a better job than Mick. And so uh, we've got a plan. We're working that plan. You know, unfortunately, the last time we went through this, it was the same opponent. We had to play Stanford in the opener. So, um, you know, we, we, we've we kind of been there, done that as a staff together. So we'll just continue to work the plan and let this thing kind of uh, move forward organically, like I said, in the offseason or in spring ball. In terms of criteria for how you decide, is it simply who gives you the best chance to beat Stanford, or will it be? Is there anything more to it? Yeah, there's a lot more to it. Um, you know, it, it's first of all a guy that can execute the offense, a, a guy that can take care of the football, a guy that when he walks on the field, the other ten guys on offense they believe in him and they believe that he's going to lead us down uh, to being consistent from a standpoint of of offensive execution. Um, and then, you know, a guy that we believe is going to be able to help lead us to a championship and a guy that, uh, you know, from a standpoint, the whole team believes in. And the way college football is today, there, there's no way you can just maybe walk out of training camp when you have this going on saying, all right, it's this guy and this guy only. You know, it's, you know, when Clayton won the job, it wasn't like Zach and, and Maddie were that far away. It was it was whiskers difference. And. Um, I think we were pretty clear with those guys, and we'll see how this thing plays out as we move forward. But um, you, you're going to need more than one quarterback in college football regardless. And uh, I, I really like the entire group. I think they're great teammates. I think they're doing a terrific job lifting each other up, and they've been getting better each day collectively as a group. So, you know, to me that's really encouraging not only for the opener for the year, but, you know, for the big picture of the program. Uh, Louis Vicar, WildcatReport.com. Um, staying on quarterbacks, are you still rotating five guys in there? Is is the idea to get it to two at some point and then one? Like, is there a plan there? Or? No, we just kind of, you know, we're just playing twister and whoever wins gets to go out and do it, you know. Uh, yeah, buddy, I don't mean to be insulting. Yeah, Louis, there's, there's definitely a plan. Um, again, this is not our first rodeo, right? We've done this now multiple times. We're, we're – we're going right through the same plan that we've done. And so there'll be numbers that'll play a factor in this. Um, but right now, no, we're, we're in heavy installs. So, I mean, what I mean mentally, a lot of stuff, a lot of, lot of plays, trying to create, we call it a bank in all three phases. We try to create as much, we get as much money, plays in the bank as we can get in, spring ball, post-spring ball, training camp. The bank is built, and then each week we create and pull, kind of deposit the plays that we think we can run against that opponent. I mean, that's kind of how we do it. So it's kind of like a hole, and then you go part, 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 uh, and then really start to – once we get through the heavy mental install, then we really work a ton of situational football. And so we're, we're almost at the end of that heavy install, and then, you know, we'll have our first situations into practice tomorrow, uh, and then it'll increase as we move forward. So 
heavy teaching, a lot of teaching. But, um, you know, I, I guess the question is as well, this guy's got to get more reps to be ready. Well, it worked with Clayton. You know, it worked with Danny. It, it, it worked with Trev and, and Kane. And the list goes on. You know, so we, I really like kind of the way that we do it. It gives every guy an opportunity. And it also gives every guy an opportunity to get better because we never know when we're going to need them. How about Matt Alvedi in the, in the bowl game, right? You never know, you know, when you're going to have to rely back on those reps. So, um, no, I, I really like the plan so far. Matt Fortuna, The Athletic. Hey, uh, how has the offensive line room makeup kind of been different with Kurt Anderson on board? I know he was on staff in a smaller role last year, but yeah. what's the change has been like? Yeah, you know, Kurt was on staff, but he was on defense last year. So it was one of those years that um, um, I think for him was, was a great opportunity to kind of get out of his comfort zone a little bit and then really share his expertise and wisdom with our defensive staff that really helped us. Uh, and he was a great teammate and a great staff mate last year, and that was a major reason why I think I compared everybody we interviewed back to him and ultimately who he is, uh, you know, won over in a lot of ways why we decided to, to hire Kurt. Um, you know, I, I think I said it at the kickoff luncheon. I mean, one guy's a University of Chicago grad and very pragmatic and very systems and, and phenomenal and absolutely terrific. And, and the other guy's like a WWE wrestler. So both guys are great and they're, they're both terrific teachers and both great coaches and great mentors. Um, I've obviously got a lot more empirical data with Kush. We went through a lot of battles together and uh, there's nobody more excited than me for him and uh, the guys that he brought down to Eastern. Uh, but, you know, Kurt just brings a different mindset. He brings a different different way because he's a different guy. And uh, I think the guys have, have gravitated to him really well. And anytime there's a position change, the first thing that has to happen is the building of relationships. And, and Kurt's done a great job and in, in, in been borderline relentless in, in building those relationships with the guys. Adam Rittenberg, ESPN. Um, you, you mentioned this a little bit at the kickoff luncheon, but the kind of annual low projections for you guys outside the program. I'm wondering how those, if at all, have affected guys inside the program coming off of the year and really the stretch that you guys have had the last four years. You know, Adam, I don't, I don't think it's affected guys outside of the fact that you can't miss it in the talking season, right? In the off season, we're, we're, we're reading a lot about opinions you know and then you get into the season and now the facts of the team kind of speak for itself and you know I think with winning 36 games you know in the last four you know boy, I think that puts it at four, us 14th in the country but I think more nationally and maybe those that don't cover us weekly or you know monthly or cover the Big Ten they kind of define our team based on a handful of games and they're all losses right multiple Duke losses lost to Western Michigan, lost to Illinois State, lost to Akron last year. That ends up being our national narrative, which I told the team, if you guys want to change that narrative, you need to go out and earn it. And uh, those, those types of games, we can't have those if we want to be a team that, you know, gets that national recognition and that national respect. But that's, that's not given, that's earned. So, um, you know, we understand we're in control of all those things. So it's, to me, it's not a negative. I think it's it's more positive of we got to be more consistent and better in games like that if you want to earn that respect. Hey, Coach. Josh Friedman from WGN. Where have you seen the biggest growth with Riley Lees the past couple of years and your expectations for him coming into the season? Yeah, Josh, probably the biggest growth has been in his hair. Uh, he's got a lot of salad. Yeah, it's it's pretty special. But, uh, you know, I think, first of all, just transitioning from being a quarterback to a receiver, you know, he's got a high level of a football IQ, but it's different having the ball in your hands and delivering it than it is running the route and catching it. And I just think that that takes time to, to hone that craft. And he's just been relentless in, in, in that work. Um, and, again, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I, I also think the – you know, to be a receiver, man, you log a lot of miles on those legs. And, and just to callous your body and your mind, uh, he's done a great job. He's, he's as strong as he's ever been. He's always been a great athlete, but he's explosive as he's ever been. And I just see him playing with a lot of confidence right now. And, um, you know, as you saw a year ago, we put a lot of trust in him. We put him in a lot of positions to make plays. Uh, we've got great trust in him and as our punt returner. Uh, we had him back as a kick returner. He's got phenomenal ball skills. Uh, and he's got a high level of trust from us as a coaching staff and, and definitely from his teammates.
Hey, Coach, can I ask a question I'm sure has been asked before? Uh, a lot of um, – it, it seems like most people would assume that Hunter Johnson is going to come in here and be the starter. What's what's the reality of the that – battle yeah the reality is it's a battle um you know it's funny i was saying at the kickoff luncheon it was interesting the big 10 announced our starting quarterback at the luncheon i didn't i didn't know we announced that so i was i appreciated them doing that um but i, th I think everybody in our program knows that the battle's ongoing uh you know tj obviously and, and aiden have a lot more reps than hunter has in our offense uh and, and he's just grinding he's again i know he transferred last year but spent a majority of the year running our scout team and did an outstanding job at it. And, and the guys, I think, really respected him for his humility and his ability to come in and work when, quite frankly, uh, he was running a different team's offense every week. Uh, and so he's playing catch up, you know, in the playbook. He's playing catch up mentally. And, you know, I think those two guys are very hungry to earn the starting job also, along with Andrew and Jason. Uh, so I, I think it's a battle. And, and I, like I said, I, when I started uh, this morning, what jumps out to me, the best part of our quarterback room right now is I think that group is really, you know, each other's biggest fans. And they're really trying to help each other when they come out after a rep. Uh, they're being coaches on the field, so to speak. And, and uh, I think that's not only great for this year, but it's great for the future of our program. Hey, Coach, Peter, uh, <laughs> Peter Elliott, collegefootballnews.com. Um, I'm wondering about Jeremy Larkin. He's kind of in his first full year as a, as a coach. I know he jokingly refers to himself as a coach, but he, he was in a coaching role a little bit last year. How have you seen his development as a coach so far this year and, and with the running backs in the yeah, offense? Yeah, Peter, he's, well, you know, I think we'd all like to see him out there toting a rock, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking to know that he doesn't get a chance to play the game that he loves anymore, but through every – piece of adversity every challenge that you have is, is an opportunity and he's run with that opportunity pardon the <laughs> plan words but uh he's been phenomenal I, he's in early he stays late uh, he's been a great asset to coach Iani in the running back room I don't want to speak for the guys but I think he's been an awesome awesome student coach for the players you know a guy who's been there done it you know things of that nature and uh I think he really relates well he's going to be a phenomenal coach he, he attacks I guess every day as a coach the same way he did every day as a player. So he's got a bright, bright future. There's no question in that. You guys are projected to be a top 25 team to start the season. There's a lot of high expectations. But like Teddy said earlier, the start of your season is the schedule is pretty rigorous. Yep. A lot of hard road games that you guys have. Um, in the past, you've had slow starts the seasons, but finished strong. How important is it? handling these expectations, and then also just starting the season really strong. Yeah, Maddie, I think that, uh, first of all, the expectations externally are not even close to the expectations internally. You know, we uh, we don't hide from the facts that we want to we want to win the Big Ten West, win the Big Ten, and earn our opportunity to go where we believe our program should be, and we don't hide from that. And, you know, we look back to the run we went on last year. Uh, you know, I think Lark's retirement was a big catalyst to us finally preparing the way you have to prepare to be a championship team. And I think that credit goes to our players. And I, I think we've really taken that to heart. You know, the last couple of years have not been maybe the starts that we've wanted, but you look back at the previous 10 or 11 and they were outstanding. So, um, you know, we're not gonna overanalyze it besides the fact that we've got to prepare better and we got to play better. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I mean, our what is it? Six of our first seven opponents are ranked or pretty darn close to being ranked, I think. And, you know, the way I talk to our guys is what an unbelievable opportunity. I'm not sure any team in our program's history has had that type of opportunity coming out the gate to start the season. So it's the other way around. I think if you want to be a champion, you got to go earn it. And um, you want to earn it by playing the best teams you possibly can. And, you know, the way the season sets up for us here in the first whatever couple months of the season, it's going to be a daunting challenge, but it's going to be an absolutely phenomenal opportunity if we want to go out and achieve our goals. And we're, we're going to have to go out and earn it really quick. So, um I think it, it's great motivation for the off season. I think it gives you great motivation when you're playing an outstanding team and program in Stanford in the open or on the road. A very similar challenge that we had a year ago going to play a Purdue team that uh, was incredibly talented and, and you have to go on the road in, in the opener. So, um, you know, maybe a little bit further trip, not a bus trip, but a plane trip. But I think our guys, um, I thought they handled that really well a year ago. And hopefully we'll, like I said, we got multiple weeks ahead of us that, that are critically important in that preparation. Uh, but I, I hope we just keep keep going kind of as we're going right now. Fitz, it seems like a lot of years in fall camp, you got O-line guys who were injured.
and that just kind of slows you down and you don't have a lot of depth, et cetera. Do you feel like, are you guys healthy? And is this the camp, knock on wood, where, you know, you come out of that with yeah. eight to 10 to 12 guys who can play? Well, that's the goal. I mean, the goal is to have at least eight, you know, at the offensive line that you can have rotation. You can have, if there's a shoelace issue, get a guy that goes in and you don't really skip a beat. I wouldn't say we're, we're there yet, eight, 10, 12. I, don't, I wouldn't say we're there anywhere at any position. Uh, but, you know, offensive line group, obviously, with a coaching change, guys graduating is definitely an area that we've got to improve and get better. And uh, you know, I think that group is taking it to heart. Um, you know, and, and, and they've been working incredibly, incredibly hard. And um, I think Jared Thomas has done an absolutely phenomenal job leading that group. A guy that's a veteran up there. He's been through a lot uh, in his time here at Northwestern. And I thought he had an outstanding year last year. And to see the leadership that he's had this entire offseason has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and so he's going to lead that group for us. I think he's going to be one of the, the major leaders on our football team, not just our offensive line. And, um, you know, it's, he's going to be a really important piece of that puzzle. So that, that's definitely work in progress. Who else is uh, cemented so hot Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Similar question. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry. When, 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 when you look at your defense now uh, and the personnel and how you play versus when you arrived, what are the biggest differences or things that jump out to you? We're faster, we're longer, we're more explosive, uh, we have more depth. Um, we've got this year's team, we've got more veterans back with big time playmaking ability than maybe we've ever had. Um, and, I, and I think the group is now the, the, the best part about, I think, our, our whole program but your question specifically about our defense is the job our older players are doing, mentoring our younger players. Um, and to, to see the way that, uh, you know, a, a guy like Joe Gaziano uh, is mentoring that young defensive line, all those younger guys has been just awesome. JR and Trav in the back end, you know, and, and, and Trey, I mean, those guys are doing a great job teaching our younger guys. Um, you know, kind of what we expect and how to do it. And that younger group's really coming along really fast. Same thing at linebacker, you know, with, with Chris Galley and, and Patty. I mean, I think that group's really doing a great job teaching, taking those younger guys under their wing. And I think that's how you really build competitive depth. It's one thing to put plays and scheme in the bank, but it's another thing to really invest greatly in your teammates and create a rock-solid brotherhood for when you face adversity. And um, that, that's what I'm seeing across the board in our squad, but specifically to our defense, I think that's been the biggest change is that group is just every year has become increasingly, increasingly uh, more and more selfless and, and amazing teammates and willing to give of their wisdom, their knowledge, and um, their, their, I quit, you know, quite frankly, to, to create a brotherhood that I think has been part of the reasons why we fought through adversity in the past and hopefully will in the future. Fitz, excuse me, Fitz, Tim Haggett, Chicago News Report and WNUR. Uh, tracking back for one second, I think you hear a lot out, uh, externally from people like us and pundits about consistency on the offensive line. How important do you think that actually is to have all these starters back? Like Teddy was saying, you don't necessarily have as many this year as you did last year. Yeah. But what do you do with the new coaching staff sure. and with a lot of question marks, if you will, to ensure that you have those five, six, seven, eight plus guys? Ready yeah, to go Tim, you got to go out. Like I said earlier, you got to go out and earn it. This guy's got to go to work. You know, every day is we're trying to, you know, the way we practice here is kind of like being on the on deck circle to get ready to go into batter's box. You're, you're swinging the weighted bat, so when you get out in the game, you know, your hands feel so fast that no matter how fast the guy throws the ball, uh, you, you can get your hands through the zone and, and be patient enough when a curveball comes or a changeup, right? And try to put those guys in that crucible and practice uh, so they can trust themselves and go play when we get to games. And that we're in that process right now with that group in particular. You know, Kurt's throwing a lot at them. We're expecting, we have high standards in that room. Um, you know, you got ebb and flow, good, good plays, bad plays, good, good sets, bad sets, good day, bad day. Um, but the group just has to keep that mindset that they just have to keep improving and getting better. And, and so far, that's what I've seen five in now, you know, we get, we get the grind now coming up here. Now the next, like everybody in college football, it's, it's the same for everybody. Um, you know, these next two weeks are a grind of camp. Everybody's excited week one, but week two and week three are the grind. Then you get to game week and, you know, here we go, let's go play, and we stop talking, and then you got to go do it as a squad on Saturdays or Friday, whatever. Um, so uh, I, I, I like the attitude of the group. I love the leadership with Jared right now. Uh, I think Kurt's imposing his personality and his standards into the room. 
that will be a work in progress throughout the year. And I think that group's just going to continue to get better and better and better based on what I've seen. But, you know, to Teddy's question earlier, I, I can't control injuries. We can just control the next guys having to step up. And a year ago, some guys didn't step up well enough early, and it hurt us. Now, in the long run, they got better. But early, they weren't ready to go, and that's a byproduct probably the way they, they went through training camp. You know, I'm a backup. I'm not going to really start. I'm going I'm going in hard, but I'm not going to be a champion. And then you get thrown out in the fire, and, and they didn't trust themselves from the way they prepared, probably because they didn't prepare well enough. And that starts with us, and we got to do a better job. And, you know, you learn from each team and each guy, and, and I think we're doing a better job right now than maybe we, we had, you know, weekend last year. You can sometimes get a little – I wouldn't say complacent, but a little comfortable when you have a veteran group, you know, and, and guys kind of assume roles and you know, you're in the twos, you're a play away. You got to get yourself ready more so in that group than you do as a starter. Uh, Peter Warren to Daily Northwestern. Uh, there's been a few medical retirements since the start of last season, but there are a few players who uh, we don't know if they medically retired or what happened that are on the roster from last year. Guys like Alonzo Mayo, uh, Nathan Fox, can you comment on? Some of those players who aren't currently on the roster. Yeah. Um, do you want to give me specific names, and I'll do the best job I can? Yeah. Um, you just want me to like name one, you go, and then back and forth. <laughs> well, let's go tennis. All Here right. We go. Cool. Serve and <laughs> uh, Alonzo Mayo. Yeah, he's he's uh, had a great career, and he's out of the real world, not the one on MTV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan Fox. Uh, he's uh, I, I believe going to uh, transfer to play at the uh, U of H, is what I read. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric uh, Eshu. He's uh, unfortunately had to medically retire. Mm -hmm. Uh, Django Glacken. Unfortunately, had to medically retire. Uh, Brian Kaiser. Unfortunately, had to medically retire. <laughs> Steven Reese. He's on to the real world. <laughs> uh, Mason Suet. Uh, un unfortunately, had to uh, retire. And uh, Jackson uh, Termonia. Unfortunately, had to retire. All right. Thanks. Any anything else? Uh, I think that's it right now. Okay, thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. It's fun playing tennis with you. Uh, Benjamin Rosenberg, also from the Daily. Um, uh, the secondary has had a lot of injuries the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you looking? What are you looking at depth-wise? You've got a couple starters coming back, mm -hmm. a couple of people who played off and on who are going to be starters now. Where are you looking at depth-wise uh, in the the back level of the defense? Well, I think it's outstanding. I think it might be the best we've had, to be quite honest with you, Benjamin. I, I'm 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 excited about that group. I, I'm I'm really excited about it. I think the group number one learned a lot last year. We had to play a lot of young guys because of injury. Uh, Jerry Brown had a lot of great lines that I can't say on camera, but he had a lot of lines and they came true last year. Uh, and, you know, when I, I think back to, you know, when I played in, in 94, you know, Chris and Rodney had to learn a lot on the field. You know, you wish they could have learned on the practice field. And then 95, they go and probably are two of the best corners ever in Big Ten history. You have two just unbelievable years, but they, they kind of had to go through the fire of, of 94. And, you know, when I think about a lot of the young guys that played a year ago, that's that's what I saw. They were going through the reps. You'd hope they'd get in practice, that they were getting them in the, on the field. And I think they've learned from it, and I think they're really hungry um, to improve. But I think we've got really solid depth there. I think the group is working absolutely relentless right now. And, um, you know, you, you, you need to have a great back end. Obviously, the, the game's won up front, but you got to have a great back end, especially with the amount of – you know, throws that are happening in games right now and people trying to make explosive plays. So um, we got a lot of work to do there, but I, I, I like the way the group is working right now. Pete Bordwell, ABC7. Um, kicking, uh, the place kicking was a little bit of an adventure last year. Uh, Pat, uh, is that settled down in the offseason? Uh, do you expect to have one guy designated roles or uh, – how is it working out so far? Yeah, Pete, I hope I ne we never have to go through what we went through a year ago where, unfortunately, we have multiple injuries at the kicker position, and then we've got a punter who's kicking a field goal for the first time since high school. So, you know, I, I thought the group handled it really well um, with the cards that they were dealt. Um, we, had, we had to do some things as a program to adjust, and, and it ended up working out. Uh, you know, Charlie's back full speed, and, uh, you know, I think that that really helps a lot. Uh, and same thing with punting. Dan Kubiak is back full speed. I thought Dan was going to compete for the starting job a year ago. So we'll, we'll kind of see how this progresses throughout camp, and we'll let, you know, consistency of execution and, and numbers dictate kind of where we start the season. But uh, we're, we're much healthier at this point than we were an overwhelming majority of last year. So hopefully it'll, we'll stay healthy.
When you guys go eight and one, nine and one, whatever it is over your last games decided by four points or fewer, yeah. um, is that a? Do you think that has a domino effect? I mean, you win one, you guys believe you can win the next. I mean, how do you? What what's kind of the science or art behind? Winning so many yeah, man. Games. I don't. I don't think we we flinch as a staff, and most importantly, I don't think we panic as players when we're in those close games. I mean, you go back over my 14 years, and probably even longer, you going back to an, even when I played, there weren't a whole lot of Northwestern 50 yard opponent but zero. You know, they were a lot of close games, and uh, either side. And I think we've become much more consistent. Um, in, in winning those close games, I think for a number of reasons. Number one, I think our guys are very well conditioned and prepared by Jay Hooten and his staff. I think our guys in the fourth quarter uh, have a lot left in the tank and or overtime uh, than, than maybe our guys get credit for. And I think Jay and his staff do a phenomenal job. But our guys put the work in for that. I think we're an incredibly disciplined football team. You know, we we're the lowest penalized team in the country last year. I think that's not a some of the time thing. That's an all the time thing. It's some things that we coach every day. And we talk about every day. So what I'm getting at is when we when the heat's up, when the plays are on the line, we don't panic, we don't flinch, we don't beat ourselves. And when you beat us, then we tip our hat, we take it off, we shake your hand and congratulate you because we know we know that you beat us. You know, you beat us. You know, I think back to the Michigan game a year ago. We that was one of the games that I felt like we made too many mistakes down the stretch, but they made some plays too, and you just tip your hat and away you go. Right? Same thing. Once we got momentum in the Big Ten championship game, we had every opportunity. We made some mistakes. So those were more a little uncharacteristic, even the Notre Dame game, uh, where we made mistakes down the stretch in execution. And you look back as a coach and you go, well, "Did we ask our guys to do too much? Did we not rep that enough? Should we have done this? Should we have done that?" It wasn't from our guys' lack of prep or. Our, our, our lack of discipline. We just didn't get the job done. So uh, I think there's a lot of things that play into it, but I, I think we're comfortable in those games. And I also think that might play into why maybe we don't get a lot of national recognition from a respect standpoint. You know, I, I didn't know that you, the, the goal was to win by 80 points. I thought it was a win by one. So I don't know. Again, we kind of worry about what we can control and we'll just keep winning. That's, that's at the top of what we value is, is winning. It's making the right choices and putting it all together and being successful consistently. And I think we're pretty close to where we want to be as a program. But for this year's team and their opportunity, we got a lot of work to do before the opener. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks. Have a great day. Hope everyone enjoys your day. Thanks. Go Cats.